Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so we're excited to have you all on the Google Hangout uh, for PN Growth. Um, I'd like to begin with an introduction um, of the people that uh, have agreed to participate on the call. So uh, first, I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce Palav uh, from uh, Fusion Charts. Um, he is going to give us the entrepreneurial perspective. Uh, followed by Sharad, who is going to give us the iSprit uh, perspective about the ecosystem. Uh, I'm Sharik uh, and uh, Rem Koning. Uh, we're both from Stanford University, and we'll be handling the academic part of the PN Growth Bootcamp. So uh, what we want to do today is have a, a conversation about uh, the big uh, problems that we're trying to solve. And what we've learned through conversations with entrepreneurs uh, conversations with people in uh, the VC uh, arena, um, as well as uh, other participants in India's burgeoning uh, entrepreneurial tech ecosystem, is that uh, the Indian startups are fantastic, world-class in building products. Um, uh, that problem has a lot of solutions. Now, I think the next level uh, that everyone wants to get to is how do you build awesome companies? So. Uh, what I'm going to do in kind of uh, moderating this uh, hangout is first start with Balav and ask him to t share, uh, share some stories about his own experience as a tech founder, uh, a successful one in India's ecosystem, and talk to us a little bit about his journey. Balav? Sure. Thanks, Sharik. So uh, I started Fusion Charts in 2002. I was actually in high school and need for pocket money. And I thought nothing better than starting up a tech startup. Though it did not, uh, it was not a plan per se. I was just writing some code and writing some uh, content around code. One thing led to another, and here I was running tech startup. So for the first three years, it was just me, and kept on building products and selling it. Got some revenues. So because of lean operations, was profitable from day one. And then over the last uh, ten years thereafter, uh, kept on adding teams and products and offices and customers. So that's a journey in short. And we've chosen to remain bootstrapped. Uh, all the way because by the time we realized what venture capital is, we had enough money in our bank to be able to fund our own companies. Oh, that's, uh, that's great. So um, tell us a little bit about like the bigger uh, challenges that you've been facing. And I know you've been working a lot with other entrepreneurs. Um, can you tell us some really great stories about other entrepreneurs who've been trying to scale in India and kind of the experiences that they've faced? Sure. So before I do that, let me take a step. So if I just to extrapolate or uh, make an analogy of my journey, so I think there are three phases for any company. There's a zero to one phase, there's a one to ten phase, and there's a ten to hundred phase. The zero to one phase is where we talk about, hey, what do we build? Uh, the one to ten is, hey, how do we scale it up? And from ten to hundred is, hey, how do we make it the category leader in the world? And similar to Fusion Charts, we've been in the zero to one in one to ten phase, there are other companies like, for example, a close friend called Varun Shu runs a company called Kayako. Uh, they started at the same time. Uh, they're building help desk ticketing systems, and they scaled it up to 30, 40,000 customers. Initially, it was just him uh, working day and night to be able to get the product. The zero to one went beautifully. His one to one also also went beautifully. Very quiet, tens of thousands of customers, uh, more than 100 people, a uh, couple of different products in that product line. But to be able to build a category leader, uh, he had to completely think differently. And as and when we delve more into the hangout, the stories, I'll tell some of the things that he's doing and some of the things that we are also doing. Uh, where it's a complete uh, mindset change, or say orbit change. The linearity of thinking has re has to be reversed to be able to think uh, think when we need to think about building category leaders. So the zero to one and one to ten, most have been able to achieve in India because there are enough and more product startups. Many people are trying and they are doing good stuff. But the ten to hundred is what we desperately need at this point in time. Great. Um, sure. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Can you talk to us about the 10 to 100 and what you see as our biggest challenges in the ecosystem for getting us there? You know, uh, you know at iSpirit, we've often been passionately focused on creating category winners because these category winners are the ones who, you know, have high valuations. And our sense is that if we look back 10 years from now, there'll be these category winners that will determine, you know, perhaps 70, 80% of the overall valuation of the industry. And, and we are finally at a threshold where, you know, there are opportunities to create category winners. So, 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 so what Pallav's insights, uh, uh, you know, have informed this thinking that, you know, there is, 
something that we are not doing right. You know, we, there are lots of companies getting from zero to one, as Pallav says. You know, that is the time of figuring out survival. They are getting past survival. But when they are thinking about getting to the next 100x growth, you know, they are stumbling uh, and, and failing. And not because the competition is forcing them to do that. It is actually happening because of internal issues that are overwhelming them and preventing them from being able to fully realize that potential. And there are many examples like this <laughs> that are coming up. And uh, so in some sense, PN growth is this fortuitous confluence of three things coming together. You know, this desire to create category winners, the insight that Pallav and, and, and uh, you know, other founders have about why is it that we are stumbling, uh, you know, on our own and the insight that uh, Sharik and Rem and, and your team brings, uh, you know, from a global perspective, which says, hey, you know, this is a movie we have seen before. There is a <laughs> there is a solution to this. So perhaps, Sharik, you should explain your perspective in that context. Uh, you sure. know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rem, definitely chime in as, uh, as I speak. So the way we see it um, is that there are really two fundamental problems that entrepreneurs face. One is designing the technology, um, the product that they're actually building. And I think for the longest time, I think there's no doubt that India is uh, one of the greatest places on earth to develop great software. Um, and that's been proven time and time again. Uh, I think the challenge now is to build kind of companies around that. And what, what we've realized is the process that makes software good, uh, the constant redesign, the iteration, uh, the feedback, and then the rethinking of fundamental issues, building from the ground up, I think that same insight that I think Indian entrepreneurs are fantastic at can be applied also to redesign the foundations of the company. So we're really thinking about shifting uh, what people are already good at designing uh, to uh, a different problem, which is building the company. And you know, we, we've been kind of conceptualizing PN growth uh, in the following way, that we think there are really three core issues uh, and three core competencies uh, that make great companies, uh, particularly at that stage where the, you already have something that's a good product uh, to something that uh, is going to be a global category winner. And, and those things are uh, finding the right talent and nurturing that talent for the company, so the stories that you hear, uh, there's a really, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, there's a joke about, um, you know, all the good parking spots are taken, and I think that's probably true of um, really good product managers as well, and really good marketing people. Um, and so one of the challenges uh, Pallav and I were just talking about is, you know, really, really great product managers are necessary for getting companies to the 100x stage, or and beyond. And the problem is those really great product managers are already starting their own companies. Uh, and that poses a very challenging problem for, problem for Indian founders who really want to grow. Where are these people? How do you get them excited about your own product? And so building that pipeline and inspiring people to join your company is a, is a challenging problem. The second problem is um, architecture inside the firm. Um, this is how do you get people motivated and get the right processes internally to make the best use of the talent that you already have. Um, and that's really about building a fantastic culture inside the organization. And I think the third thing, which also relates to the people, but also relates conceptually to where does your product fit in in a larger global ecosystem? What is your product strategy? You know, you might have this very uh, concrete, delineated product, but how do you think about where it's going to go in the future, right? I mean, you might have PageRank as Google, but it's got to fit into this larger suite of things that's going to make you what Google is today or what Apple is today. And so where do you see kind of the positioning of your product in a larger scheme of things? And those are the three fundamental uh, uh, challenges that really we want to solve. And um, what we've learned, at least from the perspective of teaching this in business schools is that those problems cannot be taught using textbooks um, or lectures. Um, they're fundamentally uh, idiosyncratic problems that each entrepreneur is going to face something slightly different. And the best that a teacher, a facilitator can do is get you to meet other people who've solved analogous problems. And it's through learning through analogy that we think the best solutions are going to come forward. And so we've really designed PN Growth in collaborations uh, with founders like Pallav, with 
uh, people like Charlotte who really understand the larger ecosystem, and then our own experience designing curricula like this to kind of solve these problems uh, in a way that ultimately will produce results. Um, Rem, follow Charlotte, do you want to chime in? Yeah, I think the, uh, a big thing to remember as well is that I think on the organizational side, you get to a level of success, maybe you have five, ten people, you've got a product that's rolling, um, and it's easy not to see the bugs that are emerging or not even to notice the challenges that you're facing um, and sort of get into a rut where, you know, things feel good, but, you know, you're not getting that scale, you're not getting that growth. Um, and so beyond sort of being introduced to other founders, I think one of the things that we're really excited about sort of with PN growth and having all these amazing people is that they're going to help you see problems that maybe you don't even see yourself. Right? It's easy to become blinded, it's easy to you know, become obsessed with raising money, and all you're doing is concentrating on finding those VCs. Right? And I think Paul's story is great on this one. Maybe that's not what you should be spending your time on. Maybe you can actually get some revenue in Bootstrap. Um, maybe those problems, there's problems before even raising money. Maybe the reason VCs don't want to talk to you is you have to get your team in order, then you can go raise that round. Um, and I think you know, getting feedback from sort of a diverse group of people, and in a structured way. I think that's the thing that PN Growth really brings, is we want to make those you know, you can go to an event with, you know, a thousand people and you do some networking, that's wonderful, but you're not going to get that deep dive into your company. And so a lot of what we're really interested in doing is helping you benchmark where you are and sort of help guide the discussion in some sense. You can think of us as moderators in terms of helping you understand where those challenges are, how we can you know, overcome those challenges um, is sort of where we see, it, see the program going. And I think that's the really exciting, at least, at least for us, I think that's sort of a, a new thing that we bring to the table. Uh, having sort of spent a you know, number of years at Stanford GSB and sort of talking to founders in the ecosystem. And one of the things that I think is informing this program is that retooling the mind is actually very difficult. And, uh, and in some sense, that is what we are talking about. So we've kind of borrowed from this concept that this is a vipassana. <laughs> you know, you need to take time off and step away from your work. And so therefore it's been designed as a residential kind of an effort so that you are fully immersed in this step back from the humdrum of your business for three days and actually retool your, your mind and therefore your business. And, and if you are able to do this, then you are able to have that orbit shift that Pallav talked about. And I want to hand this over to Pallav because some of this retooling of the mind <laughs> has been a discussion and a journey that we've been having for at least 18 months or two years, right, Pallav? I mean, you want to shed some light on that. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, I mean, if you look at a startup, right, so uh, typically when uh, people start, the only thing they want to do is they build the product and the only thing they're looking for, hey, is my product going to work? Will I get some revenues? At that point in time, they're not worried about process, but the moment you have starting some revenue, some market validation, you put up some process around, hey, what next feature? to build or what bugs to fix or how to prioritize my project management, sales, so on and so forth. And then once you have done some processes and got more traction, you add more people. And this is great for that single product. This is great for that, let's say, the first traction or first amount of revenue. Now think about suddenly once you have built this product, you are uh, left with a crucial decision. Hey, should I build this product more in depth to satisfy uh, the same set of customers or should I start solving other problems of the same customers? If you're solving other problems of the same customer, now you've got another product to build. Obviously, those are in the same, um, assuming it's in the same domain knowledge or satisfying the same customer. Now, you're, left with, you're now forced to take another crucial, crucial decision. Should I ask my existing team to build the new product? Should I hire a new team? Should I split? Now, these are very, very simple questions to start off with. But the moment you start realizing that, hey, people drive products, the linear thinking of product process people in the 0 to 1 or partly in the 1 to 10 phase has to be completely reversed because now you start thinking from people first, people plus culture. Then you think about process because no, there's no one common process which can apply on any set of people, depending on the kind of people and the culture and the location and the kind of product or industry that you're in. You need to define a different set of processes. And finally, once you have the right people and culture and process and systems, you are already building multiple products. And because you have solved the 0 to 1 and 1 to 10, you know what product to build, you know what kind of problems uh, are important to your customers, you know how to reach out to them. Now is the time to really start pushing the pedal and say, hey, you know what, let's solve bigger problems. Uh, so I, I, I pull up a framework from a guy called Simon Sinek, uh, who I use a lot. Uh, it's a simple framework called the why, how, what framework. And the simple analogy from zero to one is what are you building? From one to ten is how are you differing? How are you differing? How are you differentiating? How are you growing? And the ten to hundred is why do you exist as a company? What is the common belief that you and your customers share together, which can help you really push the pedal, build so many products, build awesome culture, build awesome people, get people who believe in that uh, belief, 
so that you are going to be category leader inevitably, assuming you're doing things in the right way. So that's a kind of uh, complete uh, opposite thinking, so to speak, that we need to enact on uh, once we're going from 10 to 100 stage. Yeah, and I think uh, underlying all of this, uh, you know, which hasn't been touched on yet, is I think at the core of all of this is the leadership capabilities of the founder. Um, and I think founders, because they're so busy fighting fires every single day, really get to, uh, uh, you know, don't really get a lot of time um, to, uh, don't really get a lot of time to reflect on what makes them, you know, authentic to their product. And I think. Uh, kind of bringing out that authenticity um, is uh, really, really critical because I think it, it's what motivates people and it's what gets excited people about uh, building the company for kind of long-term growth. Um, so I think authenticity is something that we're going to really focus on a lot at PN Growth. Um, so uh, I, I want to take some questions from the audience, and there's a Q&A module. Um, so uh, anyone who has any questions, we'd love to we'd love to answer them for you. And we'll also jump uh, into discussing kind of what the format of the actual three day boot camp will be uh, in, in the coming minutes as well. So please de definitely send us your questions. You know, and I, I want to jump in here, Sharik, and kind of it's tempting to give even contemporary examples, but that may upset some people. We'll do that in the program uh, when people are there at Mysore. But but clearly, I mean one. One example is Indigo Airlines, right? Very well run airlines, basically built on the same idea that Air Deccan had. And Air Deccan wasn't, you know, nobody else came and took away their idea. They stumbled and fell on their own. <laughs> and after they went away is when Indigo Airlines came along and took the same idea but implemented it well uh, <clears throat> in a way that's become very successful. So they designed the organization for scale right from day one, right? I mean, if you remember in the early days, they were able to order 100 Airbus planes, and they built the culture, the process, the the leadership. That's the way you describe Sharik for scale, you know. And 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 sometimes we are not doing enough of that. And uh, and earlier it wasn't possible to do it because people didn't know whether they'll get money. But, but now money is not a challenge for companies that get to uh, one to ten, as as Pallav was mentioning. In that zone, money is available today. And since money is available today, you know, we need to rethink the way we build companies and PN growth is really providing a framework for making that happen. So, uh, I, so one question was, so is PN growth for uh, post or pre-product market fit? Um, we see as companies on, on either side of that border. So you have a, a product that's been developed um, and maybe you found product market fit, maybe you're a little earlier. Um, but you have real products and real customers, and what you're doing is trying to grow. And the way we think about it is, you know, you've spent all this time developing a product, you put the late nights in, you put the weekends in, um, and you owe it to yourself to grow the company. Um, and I think this is actually something really interesting, sort of talking to VCs in the Valley. One of their complaints is they see people put in, like, two solid years of work where they just don't sleep, right? And maybe they sell to Facebook or Google. They get acquired. And, you know, it's great, and they make a little money, and, you know, it's exciting. But their point is, you just spent two years of your life, like, you know, you didn't talk to anyone, you've been holed up in your basement just coding away. Um, don't you want to sort of make something greater? If you're going to put in all that effort, isn't there this idea of, you know, let's not stop at 10, let's get to that 100? And so a lot of what we're interested in doing is sort of enabling people to uh, be able to take that step and overcome the challenges they're facing. So if people maybe have some challenges they're facing, it would be awesome to, you know, ask some questions and maybe we can get Talib and Shards and Sharik's thoughts on sort of how PN growth can help you overcome some of those challenges. Right, so I see a couple of questions here, Shark. All right, um, can you, can you uh, uh, take the first question, Paulo? Yeah, so, uh, so between money raising and product focus, I don't think it's an either or question. Uh, the first, so I mean, if the way I look at the startup, a startup is there to solve a problem of a customer. Money is just the means of it, uh, which can run in parallel, which can take maybe some bandwidth off your product focus. But if you're not fundamentally solving the problem of the customer, how much of a money you raise, that's not going to be helpful. And especially in technology business, unless we're talking about, let's say, businesses where it's very high distribution or you're, where you're thinking about a lot of capital investment, just more money is not going to help you solve your product. Till you really understand your customer's problem, till you really, till you, your customer, your employees have the same 
core belief, throwing money at that definitely doesn't solve the problem. In fact, sometimes it actually uh, exaggerates the problem because you have too many things to do or you're not focus focusing on the right thing. So in the zero to one stage to get started for a product, yes, you may need a little bit of money, but you might as well do it with that. In the one to 10 stage, based on the learnings that you've had from zero to one, you need money to be able to scale up your teams. Part of that money could also come from customers or it could come from investors. That's a way, uh, that's, that's again a dependent on how the, what is the DNA of the entrepreneur or how he wants, how fast he uh, thinks he thinks he can grow. But fundamentally, it's not an either or question. For me, it's always product first, customers first, solutions first. Everything else is a means to achieve that. Great. I want to uh, echo echo that a little bit. I think um, I really like um, uh, Y Combinator's tagline: "Is uh, make something people want. Unless people actually want your product." Um, it's going to be a tough road. Um, and so in terms of the sort of startups we're looking for and sort of how we think about money playing in, you know, we're looking for people who already have a product that people want. And maybe they need more people to want it. Maybe they have to work out how to make those economics work. But I think that's where we're really excited to help grow um, and, uh, you know, really, really um, sort of scale there. I saw actually a question, and I think that's related to this, which I really liked, which was how important is design thinking and the product organization growth? And if we have a plan to work through design thinking sessions, we think design thinking is really important. Both Sherrick and I have spent time at the D school. Um, we've taught design thinking before. And I think you know, it's really important to take design thinking uh, outside of just the product development process and apply it to the organization. Right? Where uh, can you gain empathy with your employees? How do you understand the external environment? Um, how can you see things that you wouldn't necessarily see? Um, and so as part of the three-day boot camp that we're doing in Mysore, um, uh, a lot of the work is actually going to be done in a design thinking framework. Very interactive, hands-on, collaborative. Um, I think we all have an aversion to uh, uh, boring lectures. You know, we'd much rather have a, a Q&A session like this where we're talking back and forth and learning from one another. Um, so yeah, design thinking definitely, definitely something we're going to emphasize throughout the program. Yeah, the whole whole program is built around the design thinking tools. We've what we've done is we've essentially refactored design thinking to uh, ch you know challenges of organizational development, and uh, every single day is built around uh, these uh, exercises where individuals um, uh, you know founders are both reflecting and also interacting um, to come up iteratively with problems. And I think the, uh, that's going to be quite uh, a fun. Uh, we've done it before in India in different boot camps. Um, and it's it's always very exciting and uh, uh, and a great learning experience for everybody. So a uh, great question um, uh, from uh, Srikant. Uh, is it really true that India has access to great tech talent, and how easy is it for startups to attract them? Um, so uh, Shara, then Pallav, would you be uh, willing to address that issue? And I, I and you know, there's another relevant question. <clears throat> which is about IT folks coming from services background. You know, I, I think one thing that is changing is you know, there's a very large uh, MNC product engineering captive kind of a ecosystem, at least here in Bangalore and also in Pune. And for the first time, you're seeing, you know, lots of people coming out from there. So they are not as contaminated by the IT services mindset, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, and therefore they are quicker to kind of get into a startup. But but keep in mind, you know, jumping from a big company to a startup is not a job change. It's in a sense a career change. <laughs> and, Lifestyle and, change. <laughs> right. And, so, and and I think companies that approach it that way, you know, when they are bringing people from big companies into their smaller company, I have had much more success in assimilating them and making them productive. And uh, <clears throat> although I don't think this is a major subject of our discussion at PN Growth. You know, in some of the side conversations, you are going to meet people, entrepreneurs, attendees, mentors, who have done this very successfully, and you'll be able to pick up tips from them as to how to make it happen as well. Sure. So, if I may add a perspective here, so uh, I started from Calcutta. Neither was it known for IT products or services, but uh, we were in Calcutta for the first eight years, and by the time we opened our Bangalore office, we had about fifteen or eighteen thousand customers at that point in time. And we're building, we're building, we're running about fourteen products in parallel at that point in time. So one of the truths I realized is, yes, you may not have access to absolute ready people you can hire in 15 days. But given the fact that you're always connected to people who, are in, who could share the same belief with you, it's one, of the job as, as, it's one of your job as an entrepreneur to be able to convince him. The second thing is, when you're running a product company, you don't need tens of thousands of people. You need that first 10, 15, 20 guys, the hardcore guys who believe in that. Uh, 
in a country of 1.3 billion people, I'm sure we can find that first 15, 20 <laughs> guys <laughs> if you're hustling well enough. So uh, one of the things that we constantly do is, hey, let's not just look at experienced people. Let's look at fresh, uh, smart, sorry, smart freshers who have that belief, who have done something interesting, who are hungry, and let's take them under our fold and give them three, four, six months to see what interesting they can do. And it's quite amazing once they come out with radical, fresh ideas, because we are always thinking in one direction, they come and attack it and say, hey, you know what, you buggers, you haven't thought it this way. And that's refreshing to see. Uh, so we were forced to take this approach, but in hindsight, uh, I think uh, it has worked out well for us. Uh, no doubt when we wanted more experience, let's say in sales or marketing, we moved to Bangalore, not moved, actually, we uh, uh, create another office in Bangalore. Uh, we got some experienced folks here. But on the tech side, uh, I don't think that's as, that's as much as a problem today as it was probably 15 years ago. Great. Um, so uh, I have a, another question uh, from Abhay. Uh, how does PN Growth uh, uh, select uh, mentors and startups? So uh, I'll just give you the startup side, and then I'll, I'll let uh, Shara talk about selecting the mentors. So from the startup side, what, we're want, what we want to do is have people apply. Uh, we've been getting a great stream of applicants, and uh, what we're looking for is product companies um, that have a little bit of traction, uh, that kind of know who their market is, but are now uh, feeling some growing pain. So that have uh, recognized some of uh, the organizational challenges that they're facing, uh, and also see kind of that they have a product that could be uh, potentially something that uh, has a, a wide reach. Um, so you know we're we're a bit agnostic in a sense to what exactly your product does, but we want it to be uh, uh, a, a product. We're looking for product companies and uh, a good team. So we're looking for people um, uh, startups that are in the you know smaller size, you know two to three people up to fifty people. I think once you're beyond the fifty people, I think the challenges are a little bit different. Um, so uh, those are the kind of startups we're looking for. And you know, if you have any questions about whether you fit in or don't fit in, just send us an email, and we'll we'll ha be happy to uh, personally talk to you about this. Um, we want to basically curate a, a really good, exciting group. And you know, part of the thing we think is that uh, uh, the program is going to be as good as the people uh, that we bring in, uh, both from the startup side and the mentor side. Um, so, Shard, do you have any um, kind of uh, insights into? how we're choosing the mentors that you can share? You know, as, as many of you know, at iSpirit, we've been one of our credos on the credo page. The first one is entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. And, and rather than getting, you know, so everybody who's been involved in the playbook roundtables are in the saddle entrepreneurs, practitioners, helping other practitioners. And we found that some of them do this really, really well. And it's a virtuous cycle. They benefit from it themselves. So therefore, they come back and do this again and again. My favorite example of this is Girish of Freshdesk. You know, by any yardstick, he is riding a tiger. If, as he gets busier and busier month after month, you should see him doing fewer playbook roundtables. But that is not the case at all. And the reason he does more of them, because he learns so much from them himself, as he points out. So we are we really love those kind of people uh, because they are both givers and 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 they kind of are very empathetic in their way they approach the other entrepreneurs and and those who have done it sustainably we put them on our i spirit page as mavens so all the mentors that you see are people who are mavens here you know we know they know how to interact with others you know give a part of themselves uh, engage empathetically and share very deeply. And so those are the guys that you are seeing come in as mentors. And this whole program is being co-created alongside them. And uh, uh, so that's why we call it home cooking. And that's why I think it will be fun and useful and productive for all the attendees. <clears throat> Rem, um, uh, would you mind talking a little bit about how we're incorporating both the um, design thinking business school type of education with the mentoring uh, in our three-day curriculum? Just talk about the debug, refactoring, and then uh, strategizing for scale setup. Yeah, and so I, I, I definitely will. I'm going to bring in another question, too, as I sort of answer it. Um, so I think uh, Amit had a question about... Um, uh, hiring generalists or specialists, um, and I'm seeing a bunch of other questions come up that are sort of specific to the startup, and those are great questions. But I think um, you know the fundamental premise for the three-day boot camp is that uh, we can't give the same advice to every startup. Every startup has their own conditions; they're facing their own problems. And so the first day of the boot camp is going to be sort of identifying the challenges. This is sort of finding the bugs in your organization. 
um, and you're going to be working with the mentors, working with other people or at the boot camp um, to sort of work out, is my challenge hiring? Is it money? Is there stuff that I don't see that someone else can help me see? And so this is where the design thinking comes in. You know, we're going to have other founders sort of work with you to sort of identify those key challenges that are stopping you from scaling, stopping you from growing. And then on the second day is sort of like, how do we uh, identify the frameworks, right? How do we identify what we're going to refactor, right? Um, and so, you know, if you're thinking about coding, um, right, this is what would be the language that I want to use or what would be the framework that I want to incorporate, um, what's the package that I'm going to bring in that's going to help my startup succeed. And this is where the mentors are going to play a huge role on that Saturday of the program is they're really going to help you, you know, since they've been through a lot of these problems before, what were the sort of frameworks that helped them that you could adopt? And then on the third day, it's all well and good to spend two days talking, learning, sort of relaxing, we're going to have yoga in the morning, so you now you're feeling very centered, you're like, I've got a plan, this is great, but if you don't actually implement the strategy, it's all for naught, right? Um, and actually, implementation can be really, really hard. So we're going to spend the third day literally just focusing on developing checklists, developing a strategy, so that when you go back to your team, you actually can implement some of the things that you're doing. Um, and I want to bring in another question right now as well, which is, how is this all going to work in only three days? Isn't this way, way, way too much to cover? Um, the answer is yes, it is way too much to cover in three days. Um, good question, Renee. Um, so the program's thought of is we're sort of kicking it off with the three-day boot camp, but then we're going to be sort of continuing with events and you know online hangouts like this, um, interactions for the whole of essentially 2016. So think of it as a class of 2016 that you're going to be a part of. We'll be following up you know a month after the boot camp asking you, how did the implementation go? What problems do you face? Who could we put you in touch to so you can actually do the changes that you said you wanted to make? Um, and that's sort of the real goal for us is that we want to be there to make sure that you do grow and scale. It's not just going to be three days and then we're going to walk away and you're never going to hear from us again. Uh, we want you know to become a community uh, that works together in the long run. Yeah, um, I'd like to add to that. I think those two first two questions are really good. So, um, you know, how does learning from a mature ecosystem apply to um, un underdeveloped ecosystems um, uh, from, for instance, Amdabad. Um, and the other is like too much to cover in three days for a startup. So I, I think that those two issues were things that we really, really thought very hard about when designing the program. Um, they came up in a absolutely the first discussions that we had. So um, I think we all believe as organizers that you can't take um, you know something off the shelf from uh, the valley and then uh, you know, apply it in India. It's just not going to work. It's a waste of time. Um, and that's why we've tried to design the program not as, uh, you know, a famous uh, speaker telling you, um, you know, exactly all their experiences and telling you that, like, this is exactly what you should do. We actually think all of us have a little bit of knowledge that cumulatively uh, amounts to a tremendous amount of resources within the ecosystem. And so our goal is not to say there's some outside perspective that we're going to bring in. We think there's solutions already in the ecosystem. And our goal is to really bring people together that are experiencing India and building a product company in India to help each other solve those problems. Um, and I think that's what makes uh, PN growth very unique and very different from uh, much of the traditional boot camps, which kind of operated in a lecture format. And so the next question I think that builds on that is, um, you know, how do we do it in three days? And the answer, as Rem said, is you can't do it in three days. It's impossible. The thing is, you can't do it in three days for a lot of reasons. One is there's just actually too much content. And the other thing is, in three days, you're not going to discover all your problems. So what you want to have is a set of resources that you can call upon as you move forward, as you go beyond the PN uh, camp, um, that you can say, hey, look, I'm encountering this problem. Does anyone have a solution for this that they can help me solve it? And so we see PN growth as the beginning of a longer-term set of relationships within the ecosystem. So we're continuously learning together, continuously solving each other's problems, and cumulatively building a body of knowledge that ultimately will solve problems that Indian founders are facing in India. So, um, you know, and these are issues that we think um, are, are fundamental, and that's why we've designed the program in such a way. Yeah, and I think we're especially excited for people. We, you know, we love people from Bangalore. That's awesome. But we're especially excited for people who are maybe from more far-flung places that don't have that ecosystem that would benefit uh, hugely from developing a network that connects them to Silicon Valley, to Bangalore, to the rest of the world. And so I think those are the, the those are some of the, the startups that we're really excited about that, you know, are maybe uh, you know being run in unexpected places 
and want to sort of benefit from this ecosystem. So we think of this as we're bringing everyone together for this three-day event so you can make those relationships, but then those are relationships that maybe you can jump on a Google Hangout with someone you met at the program to ask, okay, when you were doing hiring, how did that work? Or, you know, if you're in this situation that's tough, how do you fire someone? And maybe you need to talk to someone and say, you know, how do you go about doing this? This guy isn't working. This isn't fair to either party. You know, can you help me walk through what that would be like? It's a hard thing to do. Um, so, you know, we're really, we're really excited to sort of adapt it for India and also to bring it to sort of cities and towns outside of uh, uh, Bangalore. Right. Um, and that, I mean, that's partly why we made it residential. Um, so I, I want to just actually, there's two questions that, I, that have gotten me excited. One is, like, who should we hire? Um, and should we hire a generalist rock star or someone that's specialized? I've done a little bit of research on this also. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, and then does it take, um, uh, you know, make sense to take good freshers or train them in products uh, for the long term? So uh, I, I love giving this answer um, because um, I, I think it's the right answer. It's, the answer is it depends. It really fundamentally depends. Um, because, you, you know, with any given startup, it really depends on your stage. It really depends on what you're trying to build. It really depends on where you're located. It really depends on the person you're hiring. Um, and the, the problem is, because there is no uh, cookie-cutter solution, I think those problems are far more difficult to solve. Uh, but the thing is, there is a solution to it, and it's conversation, it's interacting with people, it's getting advice from people who've been through it. Um, and the thing is that you're probably not going to get a cookie-cutter solution from the, that either, but you'll get different perspectives. And what you'll see is, okay, I can take... Uh, this person's experience and that person's experience and see how it is analogous to my experience and then apply it. And what you'll really get good at as uh, as you're building your company is learning a lot from analogy. And once you get really good at that, I think there's almost no problem that you can't really overcome. So there's a there's a there's a question uh, which says, what is PN of PN growth? <laughs> <laughs> so PN is product nation. Uh, you know, and, and I, I just want to build on that. You know, our blog is, I spirit blog is called Product Nation. Uh, so, so, so we are, see, look, this is a program, if Sharik and Rem and others, Ronnie and others, if this was being done formally as a, as a regular program, this would have cost tens of thousands of dollars to attend, right? And we have had these programs here in Bangalore, uh, you know, I won't mention them, which have cost as much, and they have actually filled the, all the seats. Although they are not entrepreneurs who fill them, but these are 